I remember when he was upstairs and over the loudspeaker, he said, yes, when I'm gone. First he said, I want you all to be real self-realizationists, stayed in self-realization. And when I'm gone, he said, if you do that, if you're 100% loyal to the channel God has sent, I will reach down from heaven and lift each one of you up that you realize God's great love. You mean to say that you have to have met the master personally? No. He told me many times, of course, that personality attraction comes in the beginning. And I was very much attracted naturally because I met him first in Boston. He stayed at our house and I was very close to the master. I remember one thing, I had the great honor of sleeping with the master, which is considered in India the highest honor. I didn't know, but I was willing for anything to get me out of the delusion, anything. And that's what he told me. But when he left Boston, he saw that I was disturbed. He said, never mind what happens to me. Imagine it. Never mind what happens to me. That light which you see is far greater than I am. That's God himself. Now, don't you see that the reality is God's omniscience within you, manifesting as the Holy Ghost with the light, with the cosmic sound, greatest of all with the love in your heart. Now all you have to do is contact one or all of those aspects. There you have God. Why saved? I didn't meet the master too bad. It is too bad, but he is there closer to you now than ever. And in one of his letters I read to the boys last evening, he said, Remember, he said, that I am nearer to you and that I am always with you and will help you more than you can ever realize. Why? Because he had that omniscience of God. Now, that wasn't just for me. That was for each and every one of you who will follow and unite your consciousness with God's presence within. When you do that, when you attain contact, God contact, then you will exercise true free will. Because where's the wisdom come from? Not in sensation, not in intellect, not in mind, not in inference and reason. Because your reason is determined by all your little habits and ideas. True wisdom comes from God's omniscience. So if you unite your will with God's wisdom-guided will, then you will exercise true free will by acting independently, in an independent way, not automatically, but with the independence of soul consciousness. So going on just a little bit, to follow the master and to bend your will to the channel God has sent requires greater character and will than to follow your own little automatic guided will. Isn't that so? When you bend your will, you feel, well, who am I to bend my will? No. To bend your will and follow with obedience the master or the channel he has sent requires greater strength of will and character than to follow your own ordinary will. But by doing that, by doing that, what is the result? The reward is, as I have said, you gain the true freedom which the master has because his will is wisdom guided by God, otherwise he is not a true master. And what he does to you in the way of discipline or setting down rules and regulations which he has set down, those things are to discipline you that you may be able to act independently, exercise true free will as he has. So when you follow, that's why you gain the great reward of never again being bound by ordinary free will, being bound by automa automatic action, being born by the free will of delusion. No, you are guided by following the wisdom-guided will of God. That's the reward. And when you follow that true free will, wisdom-guided will of God, what do you attain? True freedom. God's omniscience, the freedom of God's omniscience, what can be greater? Now you see the difference between ordinary free will and wisdom-guided will. To be ever free, 
And these are facts. To be ever free from the limitations of ordinary automatic will. Being pushed here and there by these latent impulses which come up within you. Guide your life and you do the things as St. Paul said. Those things come to me. I didn't want them to come. They come. I do them. Why? Because your will is not free will. It's automatic will guided by these latent impulses. And so it is with it. And those of you who are spiritually disciplining yourselves by following the rules of self-realization, do not stop. Be more adamant in your great determination to be obedient to God through the channel he has sent. God doesn't talk to us. He's silent. But he sends channels as the great ones and our beloved master. Now, whomever is obedient to that channel and spiritually disciplines himself to the regulations and rules and suggestions set down by the master. He is a wise person. He is a true yogi. As Sister Gynamata said one time, people complain, well, I will follow the master. Whatever he says for me to do, I will do, but I won't follow anybody else. Well, that's fine, isn't it? Imagine it. As she told them, she said, listen, if he is your guru, why don't you follow him? Why are you here? Unless you follow God through the channel he has sent to you. That's the attitude we should have. That's the loyalty we should have. If we have that, God will respond. But if we have mental reservations in everything we do, how are we ever going to find God who knows our very thoughts and emotions? And so spiritual obedience, spiritual discipline strengthens true free will within us. Free will guided by the wisdom of God. One story comes to my mind to show you the great reward of exercising true free will. When the master first came to Boston quite some years ago now, in 1922, a year after he was there, we went up the North Shore. Those of you who are familiar with Boston know that it's in April it's awful cold up there and damp. But we were going up to a cottage to have a few days, so we went up there. And uh, I was out walking with the master, and it's bitter cold. That Atlantic is terrible in the spring. I was out walking with the master, and there's a big breakwater stuck out into the Atlantic Ocean near Plum Island, Massachusetts. He said, fine, nice place to meditate, doctor. Let's go out. So I went out. It was low tide. 